Welcome great friends, last week I got everyone started on a suggested tank build which was really short range and melee focused, a build meant for slow plotting progress but an ability to soak up some damage and dish it out to zombies nearby. In this pro build series episode we're going to have a look at something that is pretty much the opposite. We're going to take a look at the assassin build. It's going to be a build up to level 20 in alpha 27 days to die. I will focus on making an outline or template for what you can base a general character build on. It's not going to be perfect as everyone plays differently on different settings, whether solo or multiplayer and so on, but it's a build that uh, I think works pretty well as a base. If you're enjoying my 7 days to die videos, make sure to stealth kill that like button and why not get that subscribe button as well and hit the notification bell with the rain shot to ensure that you don't miss future videos. As we go through this build, I will be giving my rationale and reason for why I make certain choices. And if you run across changes or differences that work in your particular playstyle, why not put a comment below and let me know how you would do something differently and why. Let us all learn from each other, get ideas out there for how to change things up. And we will be looking at predominantly the agility here and we will be putting most of the points in there. However, Pure agility builds have some problems due to sort of the peculiarity of their skills available. For instance, there's no easy way to regain health. I mean, you don't have the first aid bandages or kits and there's no cooked food. Stamina could be an issue because there's no stamina regaining skills either. We're going to work around that by taking some dives into the other attribute trees in order to have a better well-rounded character. We're going to set this build at level 20, which gives us... A nice 23 points because you have the initial four points from just doing the starter quest. Make sure you do those because it's really, really important. Now, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to be looking obviously at Archer. And the reason to do that is because it does allow us to create that wooden bow and the iron crossbow. But you're necessarily not going to craft iron crossbow immediately, but you probably want to make the wooden bow. And again, deal more damage, faster draw and aim and reload. And, you know, that's something you want to do initially because it just helps you stay alive. Secondly, we're going to go down to Hidden Strike. This is a really good skill because it allows you to gain extra damage from your sneak attacks. It starts at 50, 100, 150, goes all the way up to 250 damage. So that extra 50% for sneak is useful. It just kills them before they know you are around. Then is where we're going to switch over to the other attributes. And Fortitude is the first one. We're going to go down to Rule 1 Cardio. Having this one always good because you want to keep mobile and you want to get that stamina back. And this one is almost free because you don't need to level up the attribute Fortitude at all. You just take the first skill here. We're also going to go for Healing Factor because it just means that we're going to heal one every 90 seconds and Critical Injury is just healing faster. This is a no-brainer. I would always suggest taking that. Then we're going to switch over to Strength. Master Chef. If you do find a lot of good schematics really early on, you can probably skip this, but this one does allow you to make those bacon eggs, you know, the boiled meats, baked potatoes, and tea and coffee. Those can really save because all of us, we have problems with getting health back because we don't want to just stick around. So we want to have some good food that also gives us health. And of course, uh, you know, good drinks are always helpful. I've also planned in for one more point that I want to spend somewhere else. And there's actually a few you could choose depending on what you do. If you want more resources, put into Miner, 6 and 9 or Mother Load. You could do Pack Mule again, just being able to carry more stuff. Sexual Turasanas can be helpful if you're doing a lot of power attacks. It's not critical, but it can definitely help as well. If you want to make sure that you get your fortune and everything, get that up early. Blacksmith. So we're going to go for Blacksmith here just to get into that intellect tree a little bit because getting a fortune up early can be super helpful coming back to agility we're now going to put one point into deep cuts and this is something that is good because it unlocks the hunting knife because that's better than the bow knife and also allows you to do q2 knives and bleeding inflict inflict up to three bleeding wounds on an enemy and power attack and inflicts two and enemies run 10 percent slow while bleeding which means that it's easy for you to get away so we're going to put one point in there we're also going to put one point into light armor it does unlock leather armor crafting even though we're probably going to go cloth armor but again it just gives you that option better armor you get q2 armor and of course better movement etc so that's helpful 
Now we're going to go into Gunslinger as well. Pistols are really powerful because you do have an issue with damage output otherwise. Because you're using a knife, good sometimes. Again, it's not massive damage. Archery, good at a distance, but you do want to have something if you get mobbed by a group of zombies. And the pistol is the best weapon that you have available. Craft quality 2, more damage, faster fire rate, and faster reload. And of course, now you can also craft that pistol. At this point, we do have a solid point. We have gotten points into the agility skills to help us deal damage and fight better, but we also have some into fortitude, a little bit intelligence and strength to give us a little bit of longevity, give us that food and healing. And, you know, in, in this case, we can also craft the forge. So we can get a little bit of better stuff, such as obviously we want to move up to a workbench to get that iron crossbow and everything. What about the next one? Well, we're going to start pumping a little bit into agility itself. Uh, we need to bump that up. So we're going to go up to this. I'm going to go one more. We do need to bring this up uh, in order to unlock some other skills further down here as well. It does help with the headshot damage, 220%, and dismemberment, now 15%. Because in an assassin bow build, you do want to sneak, you do want to hit the head, and you do want to try and dismember it to sort of get a one hit, one kill. And having that really helps. We're also then going to go to parkour, and this is where we need to have agility level 4. So we're going to put in another point just to make sure we get that. And again, that brings us up to 230 headshot damage and 20% chance to dismember. It allows us to do parkour 1 and parkour 2. The useful thing here is that you can jump one meter higher. And this is just going to keep you alive because being up on a wall too high up is much better than being down in a group and getting killed. Shooting them from up high where they can't hit you, well, who doesn't want to do that? Now we're going to go for hit and strike as well. Buff up that damage for sneak attack. Now it's going to be 100%. Really helpful. Archery, we're going to put another point in here as well. You do get... Uh, more damage and faster aim and everything. And you can craft quality three bows as well, which is something you want to do. You're going to go for another deep cuts as well. Again, you do want to have some close combat capability as well. Quality three knives, helpful, deal 20% more damage. And of course, the bleeding wounds as well doesn't hurt at all either. After that, we're going to go gunslinger, of course. That gives us quality three pistols, more damage, etc. It's a really interesting thing because in agility build, actually you can make good use of all the combat perks here. It's not like, for instance, you look at the strength where either you go one-handed or two-handed or rather club or sledgehammer. For this one, you definitely want to go for all of them because they have different uses for different situations. So we're going to have make sure we have that pistol up as well. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to actually go for perception. And we're going to go Penetrator. This one is helpful because it does help you ignore armor with firearms and archer and 20% armor reduction if they have any. This is something that a lot of people don't take, but it's really underused. If the target has armor, it could be cops, bikers, soldiers, they would otherwise mitigate a lot more damage. And just taking this one helps. Even if you don't go further down, it means that you're going to do more damage to armor targets. That's something that you want to make sure you do as well, just to ensure that you get that one hit kill as well. We're also going to start putting some points into run and gun. This is something that especially with a pistol, especially with an agility build, you want to keep mobile. So putting this one basically means that while your hip fire accuracy goes up, but your movement penalty goes down. And this is really something you want to do. We're actually going to put in two points here. We now have three points left with our last three points. This means that our movement penalty while reloading is reduced by 60%, which means that you're almost going to be as fast as just regular when you're running around. And this is something that can really keep you alive. What do we going to do with the last two points? Well, we're going to put one into a flurry of blows means that you're going to attack 10% faster. Again, it's something that just helps a little bit. And we're going to go into light armor too, which means that we can make quality three fair light armor. And again, you do reduce the armor penalty and the stamina penalty, etc. And the durability goes up. You could actually skip this one and put something in something else, such as from the shadows. This is also helpful. So where are we with that? Well, we have a character build, which we can easily move around buildings due to the parkour. So you can jump a lot higher. We can deal out a respectable amount of damage in melee, but even more, we can have really awesome damage at a distance. And how awesome? Well, give me a moment. I'm going to show that shortly. 
We also do have that pistol for when we need a faster damage output. We have respectable light armor and actually we're going to go to cloth. And we can also keep ourselves hydrated and fed. Stamina should be pretty good, allowing us to run around. And we can even reload while running around. See now? Which is really helpful when you're being chased, special at night or by ferals. What about our stats? Well, let's go take a look where we are right now. And what I have done, I have put in some cloth armor here. But let's first go for the stats. We have pretty good armor rating. It's almost 35%, and that's quite reasonable for cloth armor. Explosion resistant, 30%. Armor crit, 20%. We've got a good stamina per second, and we have 100% mobility. Really helpful. That means that we can run around as best as we can to keep out of the zombie reach. I've gone for the cloth armor because it has excellent stamina, no movement penalty, and let's you look at it, it's got pretty good armor rating. Of course, I do have some mods here as well, but you see it doesn't come with any stamina, mobility, there's no noise. No, durability is not the best, but of course, we're not going to be tanking hits anyway. You could consider going for leather armor, but you see you do get less stamina regeneration, mobility goes down, and you increase your noise. But you get some better armor rating, explosion, and armor crit resistant. But I would probably say, except for maybe Horde Knights, it's not going to be better until you get to military armor because, again, you get pretty good armor rating. And, of course, you do get some of these minuses. You probably have the customized or advanced fittings, and that definitely helps to mitigate some of that. So what about the damage output? Well, agility is one of the attributes which actually gives you a lot of weapon access. We have the melee of the knife. You probably want to go for machete later on if you can find or buy it. You have a bow for quick fire, crossbow for long range, slower sniping, and a pistol for as something in between. Let's have a look at the hunting knife. You'll see the low damage of 9.3. And that's with two mods in there. I did put the fortifying grip mod in order to give a little bit of extra heal when you're under 50%. And serrated blade mod, well, because we have to put something. Knives don't have a lot of mods that you can put in there. So just put whatever you can. It does look like it's got pretty low damage, unfortunately. And it's true for the normal attack. However, you do have a really good attack speed. You can attack twice per second. That's really good. If, if we compare it, for instance, to a club that has you know almost twice the damage, the attack per minute is half, which means that you're pretty equivalent when it comes to just damage output. Another thing that is really helpful is the power attack. If you look at the club, power attack, again, this is a kid without any mods, but it's got about 30 power attack damage for the club. The knife has around 30 as well. It goes plus or minus for the mods, depending on what you put in, which basically means that even though the melee damage is a little bit lower, power attack damage is actually equivalent and you attack faster. This is something that you don't want to underestimate because Running after someone, hitting them a couple times, running away means that they are bleeding. And let's see, have a look here. The lady is bleeding and you can basically just move out of the way and they still will be bleeding for a while. You can't do that with the club. You have to hope that you actually knock them down. But that 30 power attack damage is something that you want to make sure you're using because it's triple the regular damage. Look at the one hit plus the bleed and she's down. Later on, when you find a machete you can buy, definitely go for that because it gives you additional damage. The power attack damage, again, doesn't scale the same way because it's just, you know, not even double compared to triple here. But it's definitely something that gives you a better damage output. So I would definitely suggest later on when you can upgrade to that as well. Power attacks are great. Fast, high damage, extra bleeds. If you've been watching hardcore players play 7 Days to Die, you often see them using knives and bleed damage. Hit them on the head. But you do want to dance around a little bit, stab them, move around. Make sure you don't overextend yourself by continually using the power attack when you're in a group because it does delay your stamina regeneration, which means you can run out of it. Just hit a couple of times, move out a little bit, come back, and you definitely can kill a lot of zombies in often faster than you can with using other weapons. And something that is also awesome is the 400% damage modifier for sneak attacks. And with our current build, actually means that we have a pretty crazy 650% of damage. Let me see if I can do that. Let me get in a party girl here. Let's just backstab her. 650% damage. 
damage. Let's look at range damage. I would carry probably both the regular bow and the crossbow because it allows you to maximize the ammo that you find. The regular bow is faster to shoot and reload, but damage is less. You're looking at 53 damage here. I put on the polymer string mod and the iron rest mod. You know, there's not a lot of different that you can choose there. And for the crossbow, I put a scope. Scope I like because it just helps you to put, get those headshots at a distance as well. So what we're gonna do, and don't discount the sneak damage, it's 200% extra. Oh, I really love that. It's just it's just awesome. So because of our skills, if remember, we had the hidden strike, which gave us an extra 100%, which means that we have 300% extra. We also have the usual sneak damage of 150% damage, which means that if we sneak hit a damage with a bow, we have a massive 150% damage increase. And you can see how 90 or even 60 damage from the regular bow will kill most enemies, even if they're normal, barrel, or in some cases, even the basic irradiated ones. What about the pistol? I love the pistol. 9mm bullets are plentiful early in the game and late game you can also switch over the SMG for good damage and high capacity. In this case we're looking at a pistol with 48 damage. Got a 21 magazine because I put on the magazine extender. I also put in the auto mod, the full auto mod. And why that? Well it basically means that it's sort of like a lower tier SMG super useful if you're getting swarmed i use that all the time if i can you could switch in the silencer mod this is something that is helpful if you are let's say you do that reload if you're doing some uh, clearing of apis this allows you to basically qu quietly just assassinate some of the zombies without anyone else finding out this is something that i love to do as well sneak around and just kill them. I still like to have that auto fire mod because you can get swarmed by a bunch of zombies. So, you know, decide depending on what your situation is. But well, how does all this look? So, sneak damage. So, with the crossbow, make sure you reload after every shot and we're just gonna shoot here and 150 damage. You can kill a lot of different types of damage because again, 150 times 90. That basically is massive compared to what their damage normal hit points is about 100, 150. Of course, there if you're looking at the feral or the radiate, they have more, but uh, it really can mess up up all the way to feral radiated. You might have to make sure you actually get a headshot in order to kill them. But beyond that, it's really good. You also have the regular bow. Now, the regular bow is not as high damage, but you can shoot a lot faster compared to the crossbow, which takes a lot longer to reload. So how does that all that work? Well, let's look at using just a regular bow. We, if we can hit her, 4.5 damage. He knows about it, so she's coming for us. He still got killed. Do some sneak damage on her. Yes, we do. Same for her. And maybe... Oh, that one went straight through. Now she knows about us, but it doesn't matter. Even if she comes, we have a pretty good reload. She didn't die. Knock her down, shoot her, and I kill them. These are just regular. Again, they're not feral. They're, that would be a little bit harder as well. But what if we're using, for instance, the knife? So let's uh, get a couple of them in here. Oh, so let's... Here we go. With a knife, you can dance in. Get them a little bit in the head. Do a little bit of power attack. Look, uh, keep an eye on my stamina. It's still all right. I always make sure that I have enough. We took one hit there and all dead. And it's because I can just back out of them so they can't actually hit me. But of course, they are just regular. What about the ferals? And this is where it could be a bit of a problem. So I'm going to reload this and I'm going to spawn in a few feral girls. And normally, I would try to use the pistol because it allows you to shoot them, then back away, run away, put some more fire down. Reload if you need to, run away, then just turn around and shoot them, and they're all dead. Pistol is really good for that, especially with a full auto mod. If you don't, you actually have a bit of a problem because taking these ones out when they're all ganging up on you is not as easy in straight battle because they deal quite a lot of damage. Now, what you can do instead is that you can pretty easily just get up on places where they can't necessarily do that. In this case, they might be able to. 
but they can actually get onto all the places that we can. Such as up here, which allows me to just stand here, just shoot them, move around, shoot them again, and if they can't follow you, they can't hit you. And this is, of course, what you want to do. And if you then want to regain a little bit up and just do a little bit of power attacks here, you can do that as well. Or you can just jump out of the way again. That's where the parkour really shines because it allows you to get out of the way. And again, you almost have the pistol as a... That one. Oh, I love to shoot those vultures. One of my favorite things when I play at this kind of build is just walking around town, especially a city, and just sniping zombies. It's something that just feels so oddly satisfying, if, at least if you're better than me, because you can move around as long as you keep an eye on uh, your surround. You actually can see the zombies before they see you. You can clear out pretty much any place, at least outside. It's a little bit harder if you are inside the PR base here you're just out here if you're probably good at shooting there we go a lot of builds can't do that because they have to either use gunpowder weapons which again attracts a lot of zombies or have to go melee which again means that you risk getting hit and another thing I, I really like is the specialty arrows and bolts that you have for instance you have the flaming is something that it just looks so looks cool if you actually hit them set them on fire oh I love that set them on fire you also have the exploding the exploding bolts here which is super useful during crowd control when you're having for instance a lot of zombies let's uh, spawn in a, a bunch of them and doing blood moon halts this is something that regularly is something i love doing just a few well-placed explosive bolts and you kill a bunch of them and you get a lot of experience as well. I love them. I do save, usually save, especially my exploding bolts and arrows for the Horde Knights. The flaming arrows and flaming bolt is something that I use especially for ferals because they do have more hit points and it means that you're more likely to secure a kill even if the first hit doesn't necessarily kill them. In this case, because we have so much sneak damage and these are just regular zombies, uh, most of them actually get killed. Sneaking into the PIs, just stabbing them in the head is also really satisfying. It can be a problem with some of the level design. You see, they put glass right in front here. Again, it's because they're trying to make sure that everything wakes up as you sneak in. But if you're really stealthy, you can usually do that anyway. The main aim is just to be quiet. Kill from afar. Use the knife as a backup because it's still powerful, even if you get forced into melee distance as well and you just want to run around jump around like this get up on higher floors for instance this one is a little bit harder because you do take a little bit of damage if you get too close but if you couldn't jump too you couldn't get up here or out and this is a place that again the enemy can actually get to you so you want to make effective use of the terrain out of the PIs and all the buildings just to keep out of the reach from them it's better to be up here than to be down there if you're in a group situation, if you're playing multiplayer, stealth builds are a lot less useful simply because the likelihood of everyone being stealthy is pretty low. What normally happens is that you try to stealth, they don't, and then everything is woken up anyway, and then you get forced into close combat, which is the probably the one situation where even though you are capable, is not really ideal. So it's not necessarily the best way of playing if you're doing multiplayer. Oh! Don't necessarily want to be up here, but we can probably jump out of the way. And now we are back in safety again and getting that headshot. But what are your thoughts? Let me know how you would alter the build and make sure to tell me what your settings are or your playstyle so we have some context. See you next time, Assassin. I can get that kill. Oh, of course we could. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.